Okay, we have the armed security guards in place outside the studio doors. The sniffer dogs have swept the place. And David Menzies, the Menzoid, has been safely delivered in an armored car provided by Ali Babby Cabby. <laughs> I think we are now safe to proceed. How you doing, men's? Very good. The armored car delivery was the most dangerous part of all, Bono. <laughs> well, run us by about the dust up at Dundas Square. Explain that a little bit about that, and, and then we'll carry on with what's happened since. Yes, very, to briefly uh, recap, uh, Sunday, July 31st, uh, I went to Dundas Square with my uh, nine-year-old son, Sean. And I was testing out my brand new Canon camera. There's a lot of ambient light there. People have never been to the square. This is kind of new, Toronto's version of New York Times. And suddenly from out of the shadows, this um, woman in a hijab came running up to me, semi-hysterical, saying, we are Muslim, you do not pay, take pictures of us. And I explained that I'm in a public square and I have a right to take pictures of anyone. The next thing I know, I got a fist in the face. Uh, that was captured, by the way, by my camera because I was still clicking away. In fact, the last image is a very blurred, hazy one because I apologize, Bono, I can't multitask when I'm getting a fist in the face. Um, the, then it got surreal. Uh, got surrounded by a bunch of individuals, mostly men, uh, mo a lot of them speaking Arabic. One of them in a Puma jacket came up to me and he said, just give us the camera and we'll let you go. Now, I, again, this is not Tahir Square in Cairo. No, no, we're, supposed to, we're yeah, downtown Toronto. That's right. The, you know, don't, don't readjust your GPS. Uh, grabbed my son, and I made a beeline for a bunch of bicycle cops that were at the, uh, at the corner of Young Dundas Square. Uh, I told my story to a constable there, uh, PC Tom Regal. Uh, there was two Syrians who very bravely, and I'm so appreciative of these people, Bono, that came forward... They said the eyewitnessed it. They said everything I had to say was true. And what's more, they speak Arabic. And what the mob was saying was not very nice. Those were their words. Well, what were they saying? You know what? I didn't get into it. I mean, uh, okay, uh, that, right. that was his word. They, it wasn't very nice. Uh, then um, the constable goes over to the woman who slugged me. She is absolutely hysterical at this point. There's phlegm coming out of her mouth. She's tearing up. She's screaming. And I got to be honest, I was thinking, great. The constable is going to experience what I just did 10 minutes yeah, ago. Yeah, the rage of her. Absolutely. She comes back, and I'm there with the two Syrian eyewitnesses, and uh, Constable Regal says, uh, there'll be no charges filed. And we looked at him stunned, and I, I said, why? And he said, well, I spoke to the woman, and I believe her story, which is to say, Bono, that she tried to knock the camera out of my hands and her fist collided with my face. You see, my face accidentally got in the way. Yeah, yeah. But even so, that's still an assault. I don't care what, how you describe it. There's nothing wrong with you taking a picture. If there's someone to slap you in the face to stop you from doing it, it's an assault. The logic is perverse. I know it is. It's weird. You know, and so basically that was how the story ended. That was what was published in The Sun in the first week of August. Um, I've never received more email about us, anything I've written than this, and it's been from around the world. People have been outraged. Well, uh, okay, let's take a, a couple. You've you sure. got a couple here where we take a look at. If I can flip them up on the screen, we, we'll take there. Okay. Um, we got, I am a police officer in Toronto. After reading your article, I am embarrassed, by the way, my fellow officers handled the situation. I hope you recorded the officers' names and badge numbers and follow up with this. And then the second letter here, read your article on the Toronto side and my blood pressure has risen and feels as though it's boiling. Uh, were you not able to press charges against this individual? No. Wonder, no wonder people get away with murder today. You, your poor son must have been so frightened when this happened. Congratulations on the courage to go public with it. Well, there you go. I mean, there's support there. And I guess you were getting letters from... You said from Texas to Tehran, inviting... Uh. Absolutely, and almost every single one, Bono, was in my court and was... And, and you know what? I've got to be honest. I would say the people that should be the most appalled by the lack of action by the police should be Muslims. Because basically they're saying, well, look at this ranting woman. She, and by the way, she's claiming to have a right that she isn't entitled to. In a public square, anyone can be photographed. As a matter of fact, the police surveillance tape is there 24-7... 
filming everyone at Young Dundas Square. And here's where the story gets interesting, Bono. I filed an FOI to get the officer's notebook. Yeah, I was going to say, this is the follow-up. It's in today's newspaper. Correct. What, what you're doing now, because you're not, you're, you're Menzoy, you don't let things lie. That's right. So I wanted to see the, the videotape, because if, the, if a camera says a thousand words, well, a videotape says a million words. Well, after 30 days, the police get back to me, and they go, oh, gosh, you know what? Things happen. That seems to be the only thing that wasn't captured on uh, camera that day, right. right? I said, oh, okay, well, not to doubt your word, but I wouldn't mind checking out the videotape myself. And they go, well, because of privacy reasons, we can't do that unless you agree to us uh, digitizing everybody's face out of the tape. And I said, okay, fine. And then they said, well, guess what? It's going to cost Lucky. you about $900, right? So uh, economically, I can't afford that. Uh, the second thing is, uh, PC Regal's notebook is heavily vetted. The name of the person that assaulted me isn't there. The eyewitnesses are not there. And the rest of the writing, uh, I have to be honest, Bono, I, I, can, I can't make out. It, you know, it, it, it was a useless exercise. But in the meantime... Uh, this the, sounds like we should be over there in, Arab, in, in, in Jordan or Saudi Arabia. That's what you expect over there. Well, yeah. Not over here. No, um, it gets worse, Bono. Uh, the police independently opened up this investigation at a 52 division. I spoke to uh, Heather Nichols, and uh, that's kind of mysterious to me, too, why all of a sudden the investigation reopens. But my spidey sense is tingling because Detective Nichols has told me on several occasions, just because we've reopened the investigation still doesn't mean that charges are going to be uh, laid. And we're talking eyewitnessed. We're talking it's on film and still camera form. On September 1st, I gave my testimony to the two detectives, uh, Heather Nichols and her partner. And Bono, it was the most humiliating experience I have ever endured. Uh, what I thought was going to take 15 minutes took about an hour and 15 minutes. So they were interrogating you. Oh, absolutely. Big time. Uh, Shankaran, uh, the, uh, Detective Nichols' partner, was asking in an almost belligerent tone questions that I didn't understand the relevance to. For example... How many ch children did this family have? I said, I don't know, three or four? It, three or four. You know? And then he said, what were the ages? I go, what were the ages? How would I know? He says, well, you're a father of children, and you must know, right? And I, I, I mean, in hindsight, I look back at this bone, and I'm going, what the hell was the relevance of this? And who's being charged? Do, do we even know her name yet? No, we don't. So how can you... You're only out, you can press charges yourself. Yes. But they can't... If they don't cough up her name... Well, Where does that leave you? It, indeed, it's been over. To, oh, oh I, that will, then the name will be uh, sequestered from PC Regal's notebook uh, once I lay charges with a with a justice of the peace. And when is yeah. that going to happen? Well, that's a great question because I gave that testimony on September first. They still haven't said anything. You know, now I know Heather Nichols had to go away on a holiday, but I haven't heard anything from her partner. So I don't know if they are going to lay charges or not. I suspect that whole exercise, Bono, was somehow to try to discredit me and make me look bad because I don't know if they're subjecting anyone else to this as well. Bizarre sidebar, this is also in the column. A female security guard with Garda came up to me. Now, there was two male security guards. They were very good. And okay, they were we got to move it along she, uh, from Garda. She said to the police officer at the time of the incident, I saw this guy here two weeks ago. He was taking pictures of people. I told him to stop. And what I said is, this is either a shocking case of mistaken identity... Or a lie. Or a lie. And I don't know what her agenda is, but I went to guard a head office because they had an internal investigation. And when I spoke to their corporate communications person, Isabel Pinelli in Montreal, she said that when it comes to photographing uh, Muslims in public, this is a, to use her words, sensitive issue. And again, you know, don't oh, take okay. it from me. Right. Go to a Muslim scholar. Yeah. Where does it say you can't be? Oh, and it does it, but it also doesn't say anywhere in the Quran that you, can't, you should be able to punch a guy in the mouth either. Exactly. Thank you, Menzoid. Appreciate You're it very much. Good luck with it. Lay charges and go get them. Stay tuned, Bono.